Um, a little bit about myself is that I'm Aaron. I am a senior here at Logan, and I started this public health forum because I wanted to educate the public about certain issues, certain current issues, and I think I hope you guys are listening to this. Um, so today I'll be talking about HIV, and then we'll have Trinity presenting on social media and mental health. And I'll, I want to start off uh, before we present. I want to talk about we'll talk to U.S.-based outbreaks. So we we have salmonella infections. Charge of training beats. There have been 87 illnesses, 18 hospitalizations, and no deaths. Salmonella passes through the stomach and colonizes intestines, and you may experience diarrhea, vomiting, dehydration, and high fever. In this case, the source is charred meat product. So make sure to um, wash your hands and like clean your food properly. And there is no treatment due for mild symptoms, and it's severe enough to make antibiotics. There are also uh, the serious infections from Questo, Fresco, and Cotija cheese. There have been 26 illnesses, 23 hospitalizations, and two deaths. And the Listeria infects cells and intestines and spread based laterally, and you may experience fever, muscle aches, and tiredness. Um, so um, you should avoid consumption of cheese and yogurts from regional open foods to so not uh, get Listeria. Uh, it is from, from this outbreak, and it's the same treatment for uh, salmonella. So let's start with today's presentation about HIV. So we'll talk about the impact mechanism, prevention, treatment, and finally emerging technology. So HIV, or human mission, uh, human, human immunodeficiency virus, attacks the body's immune system and is not treated in advance to its end stage, which is the AIDS. It's acquired immunodeficiency stages. It's uh, so that's what that is. It, it basically damages. It, it's basically severe damage to the immune system to the point where you are not able to. Uh, have effective immune responses. Uh, some, some of the symptoms are fever, chills, uh, head, like headaches, night sweats, sore throat, muscle aches and pains, uh, sore joints, uh, I mean joint pain, joint, uh, fatigue, um, mouth ulcers. So this is generally during like the acute, uh, acute phase. During the chronic phase, you may be asymptomatic. So HIV actually emerged, it was actually from originally from AIDS. But I mean chimpanzees, and they uh, eventually jumped to humans from using a mutation. And eventually, we identified that HIV was the cause of AIDS. And there was a pandemic in the late uh, late 1980s and early 1990s, and it mostly impacted sub-Saharan Africa. And we've been working on antiretroviral therapy to combat HIV, but making this not a fatal disease anymore. So around 38 million people worldwide have AIDS or HIV. And there are 1.5 million new HIV infections globally. And in recent years, there have been around 680,000 AIDS-related deaths. And like young people, uh, individuals aged 15 to 24 generally have, are more susceptible to HIV because uh, around one in seven new HIV infections occur in these individuals. There, uh, HIV causes a significant economic and social impact. Uh, there is big life discrimination behind it. There's healthcare costs, etc. So HIV is a retrovirus. This is different from your normal um, virus cycles, which are either lytic or lactogenic. Lytic viruses, they enter the cell and they basically, they, they, they use the cell machinery to produce more copies and eventually they create so much of the cell bursts. That's the lytic cycle. The lactogenic cycle is where the, it, where the virus insert, inserts, it manages to insert itself into the DNA and then have it like sort of, have, have it like, it can be dormant at times and eventually like have a latent period where it sort of, where the, where the cell not recognizing that the, the, the integrated, uh, integrated genetic information from the virus is actually like viral material that will produce copies of the virus. So HIV is slightly different is in that the retrovirus how it works is that when it enters the cell, it starts with a single stranded RNA and then it has a protein named reverse transcriptase. This turns the single stranded RNA into DNA. And this DNA is um, integrated into the into the DNA, into the, the into the host genetic material with a protein called integrase, uh, which clips off nucleotides from three prime ends, which makes it like sort of like a sticky end and then paired nucleotides want to pair with them because they're available to form hydrogen bonds. So now that it's integrated, it can, uh, 
the computer so that once this uh, the genetic material is translated and uh, transcribed and translated, it will basically create immature copies of the of the virus. Basically, have the RNA and its proteins, and then it actually instead of like filling up the cell and making it burst, it actually just butts off of the cell using using the host's cell membrane to, uh, to sort of like create like its its shell. And HIV targets uh, the CD4 plus uh, uh, T cells, which are also known as helper cells. These are our cornerstone in our adaptive immunity. They activate our B cells to produce antibodies. They activate our cytotoxic C cell, uh, T cells to, to like uh, initiate apoptosis in like infected cells, etc. So without um, without like helper T cells, you can't like lodge an effective immune response. So HIV is transmitted uh, is transmitted through sexual contact with an infected person, blood transfusions and needle sharing, or sometimes mother, mother to child transmission. And there are three stages of HIV. So acute HIV, basically days to weeks after contracting, you'll experience flu-like symptoms. In this time, HIV will be is, is the viral level will be rapidly increasing as it's rapidly like producing new copies. Eventually, it's headed to flu uh, into the like period or chronic HIV stage where the, the virus is less active, it's still, it's still slowly but surely producing a, like a greater and greater viral load, but you're rather it's asymptomatic, it's not like producing at a rapid rate compared to the acute stage. And finally we have AIDS, and that's the final stage when uh, the healthy T cell count falls below 200 cells per millimeter cubed, which means you have a very low T cell count and you're very vulnerable to opportunities of infection. So to diagnose it, some initial screening tests are antibody and antigen tests, which detect anti HIV antibodies, basically our, our response to HIV, and HIV antigens, basically like a piece of the virus, or something along those lines. It can be performed on blood from a vein or finger prick, and sometimes they can use um, oral proof. There are also rapid tests that can provide results in 30 minutes or less. It's, it's like decently accurate, but it needs to be followed up with a confirmatory test. So to diagnose HIV, there, there's a Western blot in indirect immunofluorescence assay, which looks for antibodies to specific HIV protein. And right now we have the gold standard of HIV nucleic acid amplification tests to detect the actual virus in the blood. So to prevent HIV, uh, you should be aware of how it's transmitted and you should get tested if you think you're at risk. You should have safe, safe sex practices and uh, have a Try not to share needles because that can cause issues. And if you think you're at risk of developing HIV, you can take the ERUP. It's a pill that it's a, it's a preventive pill that like uh, helps or like stop HIV from taking hold of your body. And PEP is for emergency situations where you think you've been exposed already. You can take it up to 72 hours afterwards to prevent HIV from taking hold. We've been working on antiretroviral treatment, which basically targets the different processes that the, like the HIV retrovirus does. So the goal is basically to take it and until the viral load is undetectable. And the, the principle is that when you have an undetectable viral load, it's not really transmittable. So that's what people with HIV are aiming for. And it's important to initiate treatment early and the end. Um, Follow, like, keep up with their antiretroviral treatments so that you, you, can, that you can prevent or like, slow down the progression of the disease. So here are some examples of some drugs. They can prevent the attack or entry of the HIV virus. They can mess with reverse transcriptase to prevent it from turning um, single-stranded RNA into the DNA. They can also mess with integration by, by, for example, messing with integrates to prevent it from integrating into the host cells of genetic information and also try to um, affect the replication funding and maturation of HIV. So when you're living with HIV, it's important to manage your condition by taking, by, like, taking your uh, antiretroviral uh, treatments uh, regularly. You should consider uh, the, adopting a more healthy lifestyle and Try to try to keep your mental health well because there is stigma associated with HIV. So some emerging technologies uh, that we've been developing are combination ARTs, which like target multiple pathways. 
they significantly reduce the viral load in patients on detectable levels, and they prevent regression to AIDS. We've been working on simple tablet uh, uh, reg regimens, and they simplify the treatment, so you don't have to take as many pills every single day. And there are also more active injectables, which you either administer once a month or once every two months, so you don't have to like take med medication daily. There's also CRISPR Cas9, you know, which can be useful for edit editing out the integrated gen genetic information. So, like, so that it, it, it's basically okay. So CRISPR Cas9 is a gene editing tool where there is a guide RNA on it, which it has. That's what's the code. The Cas9 is used to like target a specific segment because whatever matches the RNA is your target, and it basically allows for Cas9 to cut out the precision your body can sort of repair whatever it's been cut out. So that's what we can use to edit out the segment that's been integrated into the, into the genetic information. So to conclude this up, um, AIDS is still a major health, a public health concern, and you should be aware of how it's transmitted to help prevent HIV. Um, if you think you're at risk, you should uh, take PRNP or PDP, depending on what your situation is. Treatments are definitely available if you're infected, and you should try to stand against stigma. You should invest, increase investment in new technologies and find more information at hiv.com. If there's any questions, you may ask. How is the average life expectancy of people with HIV? Um, they can uh, generally, um, people with AIDS, it's left untreated, can live for around like three years. But if you're with treatment, you can live a pretty decent life. Like, if you, can, if you manage your condition, you can make your viral load undetectable. So you can just essentially live up without, like, because if you have AIDS, right, and your T cell count is super low, that you can die from getting a cold. So if you manage your condition, that one that can happen. So you, you can live a, 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 like, a decent life. So I have a question. As a young man, now how can you protect yourself, avoid that? Um, make sure you um, don't share needles, um, do safe sex practices, and yeah, just if, if you think you're at risk, you should take PRP and PDP. Yeah, but will you feel offended if somebody asks you to have a test, you know? Um, no, it's important to get tested if you think you're exposed. Okay, thank you. Awesome. That's it. Thank you so much.